One of the most common social engineering attacks that is used on both organizations and the everyday person is what is called farming. Farming is when a scammer tries to get you to click a link that brings you to a website that looks exactly like a site that you would log in and visit normally. However, this site is actually just a copy made to look just like the site you trust. So when you put in your username and password, you've really sent them over to a scammer. A common example of this would be those bogus scam emails about your bank account being frozen unless you click the link and log in. So launching an attack like this sounds like you would need a bit of coding and web development experience to pull off, but what if I told you there was a tool built into Kali that took care of all of that for you? The tool is called the Social Engineering Toolkit, and credential harvesting is just one of its many features, so if you like this video and you want to see more of the SE Toolkit, let me know down in the comments below. So we're going to be using the Social Engineering Toolkit to create a clone of a basic web login page. So we don't get into any trouble, I'm going to be doing this attack completely internally and a login page on my Metasploitable 2 virtual machine, known as the Damn Vulnerable Web Application, or DVWA. Full disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only. I'm in no way condoning the use of this tool against real people without their consent. The purpose of this video is to show you how penetration testers would perform a farming social engineering attack in an assessment with an organization's legal permission. The SE Toolkit is a social engineering tool that is even mentioned in the CompTIA Pen Test Plus exam. Alright, now let's get started. If we go to my Metasploitable's IP address and do a slash DVWA, you can see we're brought to a login page to access the DVWA application. Using SE Toolkit, we're going to clone this page and anyone who visits our clone page and inputs their credentials, we will be able to see and use them for ourselves. To do this, we're going to open up a terminal on our Kali box and type sudo se toolkit. Once the toolkit is up and running, you can see we have six different options. We are going to type one to select the social engineering attacks option. After selecting that, we have a whole bunch of different social engineering attacks that we can run, including sending out spear phishing emails, creating malware to put on a USB drive, malicious QR code generation, but the one we're interested in for this video is going to be under website attack vectors. So we're going to type 2 to select that. Under our list of website attack vectors, we're going to type 3 to set up a credential harvester attack, and then lastly we're going to select 2 to set up a website cloner. Now that we've selected our website cloner attack, we must enter in the IP address or domain of our server that will be hosting the fake website. In our case here, it will be the IP address of our Kali box, which is 10.0.2.5. Once that is done, we must enter in the URL of the login page we want to try and clone. If we go back to our example login page, we see that the URL is http 10.0.2.4 slash dvwa slash login.php. A few seconds after we hit enter, the clone website will be up and running, and we can check it out by visiting 10.0.2.5 in our web browser. As you can see, we're looking at the web page of 10.0.2.5, and we see an exact copy of the login page on the Metasploitable server. If we were to enter some credentials in these forms here, they would be displayed in our terminal running the SE Toolkit. Let's test this by entering admin admin as the username and password. So you may have noticed that it looked like the page refreshed, and up in the address bar, we have been redirected back to the original Metasploitable web page. But if we were to go back to our terminal, we can see that the username and password were captured from the request, and now we can try to log in as the admin of the website if this were a real attack. And on the victim's end, it looks like they may have just entered in their credentials wrong the first time, and now can successfully log into the real website without them knowing that their credentials were just stolen. If we close out of the site cloner by entering Control c we see that the credentials were also saved in a file under the root.set slash reports directory that we can go back to and look at later. And again, it's important to mention that you should only be running an attack like this if you're doing something like a penetration test against an organization that gives you legal permission to perform this type of social engineering attack against its users. Do not try to perform any social engineering attack externally without permission. And thankfully, with the way web apps are built now, it is much less likely that the SE Toolkit will be able to properly clone some of the bigger name login pages like Instagram or Capital One. But this is still a very viable tool to use for cloning internal login pages during an assessment or some of the more basic web login pages that are still out there in the wild. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cybersecurity news breakdowns and other ethical hacking content. Make sure to join my Discord if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.